Management of Norwegian Cruise Lines kindly requests that there be no unauthorized videotaping or flash photography of this evening's performance. Thank you and enjoy the show. Featured in this evening's performance of the Will Rogers Follies are Stanton Gar as Wiley Post, Edmund Dante as Clem Rogers, Colleen Bartell as Ziegfeld's favorite, and starring Stacey James as Betty Blake, and Dirk Lombard as Will Rogers. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the SS Norway and Norwegian Cruise Lines are proud to present the Gene and Ryan Company in the Will Rogers Collins.
now you can do better than that. Howdy! Howdy! Whoa, that's pretty good. <laughs> Sounds like we've got ourselves a live one. <laughs> All right, now get along now. See ya. And don't go far. Well, that was quite an entrance, wasn't it? Huh? Mr. Zickfeld's idea of how to open a show. <laughs> no, actually, I can't complain too much considering I like it better than his first idea, which was kind of down the same way, but without the rope. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad to see you folks here tonight because Monday night is my favorite show of the week. Now, I did not say that yesterday. No, sir. Yesterday, I said Sunday was my favorite show of the week. Now, it occurs to me that most of you folks, when you hear the name Will Rogers, you have to expect the ushers to come down the aisle and pass those little cans down the road to collect the loose change for the Will Rogers Hospital and Institute. Am I right? Huh? Right, right. But you can relax. We won't be doing that tonight. <laughs> Mainly on account of we already took most of your money when you bought your tickets for this cruise. <laughs> anyway, I reckon we owe you something for it, which means I better get to work. <laughs> with the rope is the same one I've been annoying audiences with all my life. Mr. Zickfeld, too. Did you know he only put up with my little act just to kill time while the girls were changing? From nothing into nothing? Anyway, I was kind of surprised when I heard from Mr. Former and Zickfeld after all these years. I was even more surprised when he suggested it was time to do another one of his follies, especially since the last week he produced personally was over 16 years ago in 1931. But Mr. Zickfeld said not to worry about the order of things because his idea of my life was a whole lot more theatrical than the way I actually lived it. And then he'd be able to set us straight from time to time because he'd be looking down. That's right, just about where you folks way up there sitting, he's in that booth. And he can watch his show and see how things are moving along. Moving along, Mr. Rogers. Oh, so I guess I better move along. <laughs> oh, before I forget, I want to introduce you to a really famous person sitting right here in this audience. America's greatest aviator and fellow Oklahoman, Mr. Wiley Post. Stand up, Wiley. Let's go flying, Will. <laughs> Wiley. All right, let's try this now. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's a lot of people who say this ain't respectable work. My father having been one of them. But there's nothing wrong with swinging a rope, as long as your neck ain't in it. As a kid, I tied some nuts. I learned to make a loop. Spun it horizontal to the ground. Practiced lassoing the fence posts and most anything I found. I even wrote my sisters if they dared to come around. This pastime was my solitary skill. And people asked what will become a will. So I told you, give a man enough rope. Give a man enough rope. And he can hang himself or not. That is the choice that he has gotten. He could wind up hanging down from a tree. Or he could spin himself a lot. That's what happened to me. Give a man enough rope. Give a man enough rope. Give a man enough rope. Give a man enough rope.
that allows me to interview someone very important. Well, important to me, that is, mainly on account of without him, I wouldn't be up here right now. And that's my Paul, Mr. Clement B. Rogers. But first, I gotta set up the seat. Imagine yourself in a little town in Oklahoma. Those are my six single sisters. The date, November 4th, 1879. The reason I remember so good is, well, that's the day I was born. difficult as possible. Stop twirling that damn rope while I'm talking to you. When your ma died, I promised I'd try to raise you proper. But I'm beginning to admit defeat. I'm sorry, Pa. I'm going to Argentina. Okay, Will. You go to Argentina, but I gotta tell you something first. When you've ruined your life and you're down and out, without a friend in the world or a dollar to your name, I want you to remember this piece of fatherly advice. I told you so. Now I'm gonna get the hell out of here while I'm still in a good mood. <laughs> because there are a whole lot of people out there. And even back then, I knew I wanted to meet as many as my time on Earth would allow. Because people are what life is all about. Just a moment, Mr. Rogers. Uh, yes, Mr. Zickbell? Mr. Rogers, forgive me for interrupting, but you've been out there for two scenes and we still haven't met the girl. As you should know, in a Zickbell production, the romance never starts later than the third scene. Well, come to think of it, Mr. Zickbell, that did meet Betty Blake before I went away. It was at the railroad station. Betty was the prettiest, sweetest gal in the whole territory. She was working at the freight office, and I was expecting some new flannel underwear from back east for my trip to Argentina. You know, the kind with the trap door in the back? How very romantic. 
And where was this enchanted railroad station? Oolaga, Oklahoma. Oh, absolutely not, Mr. Rogers. In a Ziegfeld show, nothing ever happens in Oolaga. Stage manager, please. Yes, Mr. Z? Peter, have we got a set back there we can use? Something exotic, something Ziegfeldian? Well, we've got the, the Fiji Island set, Mr. Z. The Fiji Islands? Oh, come on, Mr. Ziegfeld, you might as well say we met on the moon. Brilliant, Mr. Rogers. You met your wife on the moon. Peter, go set up the moon immediately. Well, just don't stand there, Mr. Rogers. You're going to meet your wife, Betty, on the moon. Yes, sir. Here I am, Betty Blake, a simple farm worker, Arkansas, who's staying with one of my six single sisters because I landed a really swell job in the freight office of the Missouri Pacific Railroad here on the moon. But in spite of all those stories about the man in the moon, I haven't met him yet, but I was beginning to wonder what was going Sing, Miss Blake. I, I beg your pardon? We've had quite enough exposition, Miss Blake. Sing, please. Yes, sir. Do you 
Dave Blake. Here I am in South Africa. South Africa? Oh, he didn't lie, Argentina. Thank you. I came here on a cattle boat and I got seasick. In fact, I was so sick that even, even cows couldn't bear to watch. Oh. Do you mind? Here I found a job spinning a rope in Texas, Texas Jack's Wild West Show. <laughs> what are you doing? Practicing. I'm your understudy. Well, we're not exactly the same type. Why do you think they picked you? Well, I'm Mr. Zig Sam. <laughs> anyway, now I've got some really good news. After being gone for over a year, Texas Jack is finally bringing the whole show back to the U.S. of A. as he has booked us into the St. Louis World's Fair. He's coming back over that one. There's more! <laughs> you just can't wait, can you? <laughs> On the way home, we have to play Australia and New Zealand. So if you're counting the days like I am, the exact number is 642. 642? Oh, Will Rogers, how long can you expect someone to sit home and wait? I'm not wasting my use on some no-account showbiz cowboy. No, sir, not this simple farm girl from Arkansas. Excuse me, honey, but would you like that 642 days to pass just like that? Well, of course. Then you just leave it up to me. <laughs> Here, take this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen! Well, don't just stand there, honey. Go make your change. Oh, my change. Oh. 
gets cold now. You know, Mr. Zickfield spends millions of dollars on costumes, so I can't understand why he don't let the girls wear them. I want to thank you folks for making it here on my anniversary here today. This here is my 2,500th consecutive performance in the Follies here in New York. Now, a whole lot has happened in the past six years. The world lost a few important men. Teddy Roosevelt died, Tsar Nicholas of Russia, and my pa, Clem Rogers. Might surprise you to know that the three of them shared something in common. That's right, none of them ever caught my act. <laughs> now I've got an important announcement to make. This here is my final appearance in the Follies. Tomorrow, I'm off to Hollywood, California to be a screen actor. <laughs> That's what I said. And not only that, I'll be flying out there by aeroplane. The aeroplane? Well, I won't actually be doing the flying. I'm just along for the ride. I lead the flying to those folks who know how. Like Wiley Post. <laughs> Here. I'm waiting for you, Will. You promised you'd fly with me up to Alaska. Not yet, Wiley. That don't come till the end of the show. Never seen a fellow so anxious to break his neck. And mine, too. Oh, well, like I said, I'm off to Hollywood. My only regret is, is that my pa never got to see me up there on the silver screen. Ah, he never would have approved of it, though, the way he used to put it. An actor's ego is the only thing there is that keeps on growing without any nourishment. Sounds like a web. Mr. Zickfair says you can get married now. <laughs> it's about time. Ah, oh, Blake, you look beautiful. So do you. But I ain't exactly dressed for a web. Oh, don't worry. You will be. Marry me now. Marry me then. I don't care how or where I or where. Anytime you ask me, I'll rush to be all. another actor. And now, with the power invested in me by Mr. Ziegfeld, that cheapskate, I now pronounce you man and wife. 
you can kiss the bride, Sonny. <laughs>
been studying history in school, you might recall that I did not get elected president. But the actual truth is, I did carry one state, namely the District of Columbia, which, as it turns out, isn't any kind of state at all. But I've got some advice for anyone running in the future. Don't go around telling the truth, because in an American election, nothing can hurt you more than telling the truth. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. But, now Mr. Zipfeld always likes to have a moment he calls trouble in paradise. The only in this case, paradise was Hollywood, California. Well, I guess we're pretty rich by now. We had our own polo field, our own ranch house had 22 rooms. But the trouble was that because of my work, I wasn't getting to spend as much time with my family as I wanted to. So this is that scene where the leading lady sings a torch song about her troubles while sitting on top of a piano. Hello, Lieutenant Crew. He's left me alone again. What's new? All I do is sit and stare at a snapshot and an empty chair. What could the man Go. 
I'm blind, Will. Is that you, Wiley? Say goodbyes, Will. I'll be waiting for you at the field. Because I went. Will Rogers, if anything happens to you, if you get yourself killed... What'll you do, Blake? I'll never speak to you again. We had just taken off from that lagoon in Alaska when I noticed that the plane wasn't doing what Wiley had promised me it would do. Namely, fly. We're going down, Wiley, I remarked as casual as possible under the circumstances. Hell, Will, says Wiley. Nobody stays up forever. The newspapers must have been pretty hard up for weekend news, which would explain why they made such a big fuss over it. The accident occurred on August 15, 1935, 300 miles north of the Arctic Circle. In Washington, both houses of Congress observed a minute of silence. Now I know a minute don't sound like much till you figure whose mouth was being kept shut. The nation's motion picture theaters went dark. Both NBC and CBS went off the air a full half hour. I loved airplanes ever since my first flight but I could never get my paw to go up. He always said, if God had meant for us to fly, he wouldn't have made the ground so hard. He told us the truth and made us laugh at it. People are always asking me what it was like being married to a national monument. But of course, I never saw him that way. After all, national monuments do not kiss back. Now I know it wasn't easy to be married to. Betty used to say her only competition was everybody else in the world. Well, I guess I met a whole lot of people in my lifetime. And I always tried to approach them the same way my Indian ancestors would. You see, an Indian always looks back after he passes something so he can get a view of it from both sides. Why well, man don't do that. He just figures that all sides of the thing are automatically the same. That's why. You must never judge a man when you're facing him. You gotta go around him like an idiot and look at what he's looking at. Then go back and face him. You'll have a totally different idea of who he is. You'll be surprised how easy it is to get along with everybody. Never met a man I didn't like.
Terrific audience. You having a good time with your cruise? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to let you go on out there and get ready for that midnight buffet. <laughs> See that you haven't eaten in about an hour. <laughs> so I want you to go on out there and have a good life. And my best advice on how to do that would start living in such a way that you'll never be embarrassed to have Mr. Zicko do a show about you someday. Thank you and good night. appareils photographiques à flash ou des enregistreuses audio ou vidéo est interdit. Merci. Guten Abend, meine Damen und Herren, wir bitten Sie darum, während der Show keine Video, Audio und Blitzlichtaufnahmen zu machen. 